today I'm starting a series that will cover several weeks on the topic of forgiveness. Amen. God has clearly spoken to me that I need to talk to you and dialogue with you about this for various reasons. There are a number of aspects of forgiveness. And as a matter of fact, the scripture is full of stories that exemplify principles as it relates to forgiveness. And I think it's an important topic to talk about because ultimately in life, you're going to need to experience or extend forgiveness. You're going to need to receive forgiveness or you're going to need to extend forgiveness. Now, y'all don't have to say amen. I see y'all looking tight. But the truth of the matter is you done done something that you need to be forgiven. I should have got a few more amens than that. Let me say it one more time. Y'all didn't hear me. The mic wasn't turned up. Y'all was focused on something else. You know, sometimes you got to say something several times. I know you have done something already, and you're going to do something in the future where you're going to need somebody to extend forgiveness to you. That's what I'm talking about right there. That's the kind of response I'm talking about right there. Amen to the truth. Let me, let me couple with that that during the course of life, somewhere in time, you're going to need to experience forgiveness and you're going to need to extend forgiveness. You ain't got to go far. You don't have to go long. Just keep living. Somebody going to do something to you. Some joker, some cat, some dude, some dog, some girlfriend is going to do something where you are going to need to extend forgiveness. And it's important for you to understand what forgiveness is, how to experience it, and how to extend it. Because the Bible is crystal clear that if you don't learn how to forgive others, God cannot forgive you. If you are walking around with a grudge, and if you're upset and mad and angry, and are not speaking to people, and, and turning your nose, and don't want to be in the same room with folk, and you, are, you, know, you just got that kind of attitude, guess what? You are setting up yourself for a downfall for the same thing to happen to you. You know what gets on my nerves? People who act like they ain't never done anything where they need forgiveness. Now that's what gets on my nerve. Jokers that act like they got it all together, that they've dotted every I and crossed every T, have never done anything, ain't never thought about doing anything, ain't never, ain't even mentioned doing nothing. That, that, that's the kind of rascal that gets on my last nerves. Because if the truth be told, we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've all said some things and done some things and thought some things and pondered some things that we need forgiveness. Somebody say, I need it. And even while you're sitting here in the church looking all pious and righteous with your holy smile and with your, du your duds on and yeah, you've been worshiping the Lord and you've been swaying from side to side and you got your Bible underneath your arm and you got the cross hanging around your neck bigger than the one Jesus died on and yes, you quote scriptures and yes, you got all the religious garb down. You have done something where you will need forgiveness. Somebody high-five your neighbor. Say, I know that's right. <laughs> so this morning, for just a few minutes, I want to talk about components of forgiveness. In this part one of this series, I want to talk about components of forgiveness. I've been in this component mode here for a few weeks now. So I might as well start off this series dealing with the components of forgiveness. And I want to get this first message in this series from this book of 1 John, this apostle who writes as a senior believer. Here is a seasoned guy writing to some younger saints, less seasoned Christians, giving them advice and counsel and instruction. He is in particular speaking to the fact that there is some error that has crept, some theological error that has crept into the church and it is his effort and his goal to try to bring clarity to it so that, so that the saints won't be deceived. So he raises this issue and I think it's 
what I love about the Bible and the scriptures is that he, you know, God allows this Bible, this book, to contain truth in it that is still pertinent and applicable to our lives today. And when he comes down and talks about this matter of forgiveness, it is such a profound topic and it's exciting to me because it still is applicable to our lives today. Throughout the Bible, there are stories about forgiveness, but here, uh, this writer, John, this first epistle of John, wants to, he deals with, and I want to talk about this thing of forgiveness because if you don't understand how to apply and accept forgiveness, the truth of the matter is you will ride the roller, go the roller coaster of guilt and shame. If you don't know how to experience and live in the forgiveness of God's mercy and grace, if you don't understand what God uh, is try has done in our lives as it pertains to our sins and our failures, you will ride the roller coaster of guilt and shame. As a matter of fact, if you don't know how to experience the forgiveness of God, the devil will use the failures of your past to make you feel guilty, and that guilt will drive you into further sin and wrong behavior. I know I'm preaching here today. I'm preaching and teaching better than y'all are saying amen. You see, because some of what you do, some of your behavior, some of our actions are driven by trying to drown out the guilt that we feel in our conscience about the wrong things that we've done. But can I tell you something? You can't drink away your conscience. Come on, can I tell you something? You can't drug away your conscience. You can't sex away your conscience. You can't gossip away. You can't cuss away your conscience. Your conscience can only be dealt with by experiencing, hallelujah, the forgiveness of God. I wish I had somebody who understood what I was saying. When you experience the forgiveness of God and the glory of God's forgiveness eventually the very being of your soul and he washes away your sins and you understand that he has wiped the slate clean. Go on and preach, Pastor. When you understand that he wipes the slate clean, you are no longer trying to drown out the guilt of your past because you know that God has made provisions for your past to be forgiven. And I don't know how y'all feel, but that's great news. Somebody say that's great news. Ah, and so I thought for just a few moments today, I look at this and, and, and allow me to preach a little bit different than the way I normally preach. Just, just a little, no, just a little bit, it's just a little tweak. Because the way I normally preach, I walk down through scriptures right in order. But today, I want to go backwards. I, I want to start at the back of the verse and I want to back it up. Somebody tell you, neighbor, the pastor about to back something up in here. Now, I don't know where your mind is, but I'm talking about the scripture right now. I'm talking about the word of God. I want to look at the scripture and go backwards. Somebody say, go backwards. He's, he's not going to start at the top of the verse and go down. He's going to start at the back end of the verse and go back to the top of the verse. Can I do that for just a moment today? I thought I would do that by first of all looking at number one, one of the components of the key components of forgiveness is God's actions. I thought I would start off with God actions because when you talk about forgiveness, really the ultimate thing is that it is based on something that God has done. And, and that's what the text says right here in verse 9. All my points are coming from verse 9. It says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I like the latter part. It says, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Here's what he's going to do. He's going to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, now there's a two-pronged thing that God's going to do. There's two things God's going to do. He, he's going to forgive us. Somebody say forgive us yeah. now let me define what the word forgiveness means because some of y'all don't think don't understand what forgiveness is you see God is going to forgive us why he's going to forgive us because we have sinned little look as a matter of fact he says he's going to cleanse us he's going to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness now now we need God to take some action because we got two things here we've got our sins and we have our unrighteousness. Now, 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 look, we got our sins. Somebody say, we've sinned. 
A sin means to miss the mark. A sin means to miss the prize. It means to err, to go off track, to do that which is not acceptable to God. To sin means that God has established a standard and we miss the standard. We have sinned. And God, what he's going to do is address our sins. I like that. I like that. I need that because he says he's going to forgive us of our sins with a cow, with an S on the end, uh, plural. We've got sins. And every day that we go about life, there are sins. And, and, and see, what bothers me is that there are some folk, look, look, look at me closely, listen to me closely. There are some folk who are so quick to expect other folk to walk the tight line and do everything right every day. But if they look at their own raggedy life, they realize that they got some, some drama themselves. It's difficult for you to expect somebody else to walk the tight line and you ain't even on the line. Come on, talk to me for a second. You, you ain't even in the neighborhood. <laughs> they, they, at least they might be in the house, but you ain't even in the house. Go on and preach, Pastor. They can't say nothing. He forgives us of our sins. I don't know where y'all are. I've, sin I've got sins. What the S? Plural. Plurality of sins. Amen. And I need to forget it every day, every day. When I think I got it together, he points out that I still have some sins. As soon as I think that I've, 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 I've raised myself up to a particular level and finally I got myself together, when I feel like I've straightened myself out and now I'm walking the straight and narrow and now my hands are now touching the right things, when I think I got it all together, then the Holy Ghost say, ah, oh, but your thought life. Oh, man. So now I'm working on my thought life, and I got that together. So I got my feet straight, and my hands now touching the right things. And now I'm thinking the right. But he says, oh, I saw your eyes looking. You looked, uh, you looked just a little while too long the other day. And, and I heard the Holy Ghost said, I could have taken that quick glance. But after you glanced and then turned back around and looked again. Go, just look straight ahead. Act like I ain't talking to y'all. When I think I got my feet and my hands straight and my mind thinking right, and now I got my eyes looking straight ahead, then all of a sudden, ah, oh, but those words that keep coming up out of your mouth. That gossip you engaged in, that lie that you told, those curse words that you let flow out as if it was a part of the English vocabulary. Come on, talk to me for just a second. Those descriptive terms that you use to describe your feelings toward a particular situation. Ah, God said it was sin. Then when I think I got my feet straight and my hands, and my mind, and my eyes, and my mouth. Then he said, but that stuff you like to listen to. Somebody look at your neighbor, say, sins. When I get my feet straight, and my hands straight, and my mind, and my eyes, and my mouth, in my ears, then he said, but you got some in your heart that you ain't dealt with. Y'all go ahead, look straight ahead, act like I ain't talking to you. You got some stuff that's been living in your heart. You've got some emotional feelings. You've got some baggage. You've got some bitterness. You've got some pain. You've got some anger. You've got some stuff up in your heart. Oh, you think you got it together because you don't go to the bars no more and you don't drink no more and you don't do this no more. But God says, I'm looking beyond just your external activity. I'm investigating what's going on inside your heart and I'm not pleased with what I see in your heart. And if you want to be pleasing to me, you got to get your heart right you got to get that anger right you got to get that bitterness right you got to get that malice right you got to get that jealousy right you got to get your heart straight somebody say sins and he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness 
Because you and I got some unrighteous stuff, some unrighteousness. We have made some choices. We have done some acts that are unrighteous. The word unrighteous means to violate what is just, to make a decision that is just wrong. Tell your neighbor, you wrong for that. As my kids say, you wrong for that. <laughs> You're just plain wrong. But here's the wonder of what God's actions are. God has a two-pronged thing that he does for us. He forgives us, number one, and number two, he cleanses us. I love that, y'all. Excuse me. I, I love that. Let me talk to you about forgiveness. What does it mean? Forgiveness means to be able to lay something aside, to let it alone to send it away. Oh, I like that. I, I love it. Then God says, I'm going to take what you did and I'm going to just lay it to the side. I'm going to let it alone. When I lay it to the side, I'm not going to go and retrieve it. Now, now y'all know some folks say they forgive you for something, but they, they keep it close at heart. They, 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 they still have the book. They still carrying the video around. Y'all not saying nothing to me. They, they still, got, they still want to keep regurgitating. God, go on and preach, Pastor. They, they want to keep bringing it up. But God said, here's what I love about what God did. He said, your sins and iniquities I will remember no more. I'm going to wipe the slate clean. I'm going to get rid of it. And once I forgive you about it, I will not bring it up again. I won't remind you of what you did. I won't come back and play the movie again. I won't put you on pause and buy, right, rewind it back. I won't put you on D DVR. I won't replay the thing. I, I won't go back and tell you what day and time and let you see the movie again. He said, I'm going to forgive you about it. I'm going to send it away. I'm going to clear the record. I'm going to erase what you did. I'm not going to remember it ever again. And that makes me have great joy that when I remember, but God does. It. Your spouse might remember, but God does it. Your friends might remember, but God does it. And I'm thankful that the one that really matters does not remember what I did. <laughs> Woo! Hey! Somebody in here today needs to know that God has made provisions for you to be forgiven. You might not realize it and you might not know it. You might not embrace it. You may not believe it. You may not understand it. And it may not make sense according to your human calculations. But I need to tell you that God has worked out an equation that when it's all said and done and once he's added and subtracted and added and multiplied and divided by the time he's done everything on the left side of the equation once he gets to the right side of the equation whatever has happened on the left side of the equation gets erased and gets negated and gets divided and gets subtracted so that by the time go on and preach pastor you get on the other side of the equation your guilt and your wrong and your sin amounts up to a big fat zero somebody say a big fat zero somebody say a big fat zero somebody help me say a big fat zero a big fat nothing zero 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 Uh, somebody say that's good news good news he forgave me good news he let it alone good news he laid it to the side good news he sent it away good news he cleared my record good news he has washed my sins away he has forgiven me it's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us. It's one thing to forgive, but sometimes after you forgive, forgive it, there's still a mess. And he said, I know it's a mess. Woo! Woo! Excuse me, I'm excited just thinking about that. Yes, he forgave me, but sometimes folk can forgive you, but there's still a mess that needs to be cleaned up. Anybody understand what I'm saying? You, 
you, you, you, you, you messed up and you did wrong and, and now you're forgiven, but God, who gonna clean up this mess? He said, don't worry, I got you covered. If you give me time, if you give me the opportunity, I can step into the mess that you've created and your wrong decisions and I have the ability to clean up the mess. Y'all excuse me. I don't know where y'all are, but I had some messes that I needed to have cleaned up. Woo! Look at God. He's a God that can clean up your mess. Woo. Look at your neighbor and say, thank God he cleaned up my mess. Go ahead and say, tell your neighbor, if you had seen me just a few years ago, my life was a mess. <laughs> Yes, I was coming to church, but my marriage was a mess. Yes, yes, I had my Bible, but my kids were a mess. And yes, I had the cross around my neck, but everything was just jacked up. It was a mess. But ah, if you look at me today, you cannot appreciate who I am today because you don't know from where I have come from. But I'm here to tell you that the God that I serve has cleaned up my mess. He cleaned it up. He cleaned up my mess. Somebody sings a song, say, won't he make you clean inside? 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 So look at your name and say it's not just on the inside won't he make you clean outside won't he make you clean Excuse me, but I'm I'm just excited about where God has brought me from because I had a mess on my hands I I had drama on my hands and I had misery on my hands and I had all the mess I've done but he's cleaned it up you give him a chance he'll clean it up if you give him the opportunity he'll clean it up I don't care how dirty how jacked up how bad your mess is no matter how often you did it no matter how long you did it no matter how many times you did it he'll clean it up somebody say all unrighteousness tell your neighbor all unrighteousness somebody say well how did he do it he did it by the blood of Jesus he did it by the one who died on the cross was wounded for my transgressions and bruised my iniquities he died and gave me the ability and gave us the right to be forgiven and cleansed sit down I got a long way to go down 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 what did you do? Mm -mm 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 -mm. I ain't telling you. Mm -mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Watch this. Ooh, 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 ooh. Ooh, ooh. La, 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 la. God's actions. Y'all making me feel like I got all day to stand up here and preach. <laughs> but there's another component. It's not only God's actions, but it's also God's attitude. 
He got a tude, y'all. God got an attitude. And it's right here in verse 9 again. And the attitude is, he is faithful and just. Oh, I love that, y'all. He is faithful and just. He, the word faithful means he will keep his word. He will do what he said he would do. He, he, he can be depended upon to do what he said he would do. He is faithful. Now, people are unfaithful. But don't compare God with your jacked up friends. Don't put him in that category because because the very nature of God, here's something y'all got to understand about the nature of God, he is faithful. If he said it, you could take it to the bank. If he said it, you can count it as a done deal. If he said it, ah, uh, y'all not hearing me here today. He's always postured. This is what I like about his attitude. God's attitude is he's always in a position. He always face, he's facing. Y'all ever met somebody, you want them to forgive you, and they say, I, I don't know, I got to think about it, and I'm not feeling like it. Oh, y'all never met nobody like that? But that's not how God is. God, God, you don't have to think about whether he wants to. You don't have to catch him in a good mood on a particular day. He is faithful. He always, whoo, that, that makes me want to shout just thinking that his posture is to, he always wants to forgive. That's the nature of God. He says he, he is faithful and just. Somebody say, and just. It means he's going to always be in a posture to observe his divine laws. That's what just means. Just means, it means he's, he's always in a position to want to is faithful. He's always going to want to keep his word. But then just means he always wants to keep his divine law. Now, catch me. Hold up. Hold, come, here, come here for a second. Because the fact of the matter is, when you start talking about laws, laws indicate there is a cause and an effect. So when you look at the laws of God, uh, they were reflected very often in the laws of nature. We understand about God, look at nature, we learn about God. There's a law, there's a law that was determined for every action, there's an a equal and opposite reaction. So based on, on, on those laws, if, if you sin, if you do something wrong, then there are consequences to that, right? But just means that God wants to honor his divine laws because what happens is divine law steps in and supersedes the law where you deserve to be judged and you deserve to go to hell but he steps in and brings in divine law that supersedes so you should have been sent straight to hell don't pass go don't collect two hundred dollars go straight to hell but divine law steps in and says yes they deserve hell yes they deserve judgment yes they deserve to be be rejected but here I have some blood that's going to cover up what they've done and so I'm going to step in with divine law and supersede what ought to happen to them hallelujah somebody say God is always in a position and always posture with an attitude to bring in his divine law uh, look at your neighbor and say that's great news look at the other side say thank God for his divine law he is always postured and always desires. That's his attitude. I love that about God. He always wants to extend to you forgiveness and cleansing. That's his attitude. Here's my final point, my third and final point. Y'all see me walking up backwards to the text? Well, verse 9 says, if we confess our sins. My, my third and final point says, we get all this in place, but it requires our acknowledgement. Go on with your A's, Pastor. I got to show y'all everything. Our acknowledgement. Somebody say, our acknowledgement. Now, this is, this is the key that turns the, the wheel. This is the thing that unlocks the door. This, this first part of the verse 
he says, is our acknowledgement. He says, if we confess our sins, that, that, that's a condition. Now, I want you to see something here because so much of what, what God wants to do is conditional on us meeting the conditions. And matter of fact, through a great part of this section, he keeps giving us conditions. Look at verse number six. Look at verse six. If we say, look at it, if we, y'all see the if we. That's the condition. Look at verse seven. But if we walk, there's an if we. There's another condition. Look at verse eight. If we say, there's another if we. Look at verse 10. If we say, look at these, all these conditions. If we, if we, if we. God says, now there's something I need you to do. Here's, here's what I need you to do. And verse nine, he lays it out. If we confess. Now, I, 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 he says, I want you to confess. Now, this is important. He says, I want you to acknowledge. I want you to stand up and take ownership. I want you to identify what you did. I want you to stop acting like you ain't did it. Come on. When deep in your heart, you know you did it. Now, here's the problem. I was witnessing this. I was talking to somebody the other day, and here's a person who has lived a wretched life, and they said some words to me that shocked me. They said, I don't resent anything I've done in my life. Is a person with no conscience at all. They have no regard, just re no regard for how they've lived their lives. They have no regard for it at all. And they, they say, I don't regret anything that I've done. Listen, when you acknowledge, when you say, when the text says, if we acknowledge, it is taking ownership. It is acknowledging. It is standing up and identifying what you did. It means I know I missed the mark and I'm coming with an attitude and a willingness to say, I know I've done wrong and I need to make it right. My friend, my friends, Bunny Wilson and Frank Wilson were having a debate the other day. And Bunny said to her husband, Frank, the problem I have with you is that you never admit when you're wrong. Frank said, that's not true. Whew, that went right over your head, didn't it? Let me back it up and give it to you. Let me see if I can make it plain to you. She said, you never admit that you're wrong. And even in the challenge, he couldn't admit that he ever, wouldn't admit that he was wrong. He said, that's not true. All right, I'm going to take that joke out of the next service. All right, just leave it alone, Pastor. It's just, if, I, if you have to explain the joke, it's, it's not, it's, it doesn't, doesn't work. Y'all are getting, in the middle of the night, y'all wake up. <laughs> y'all, y'all are getting, y'all a little slow this morning, just waking up. You're... In other words, <laughs> some of y'all are getting it slowly, finally y'all are getting it. David acknowledged his sin when he had slept with Bathsheba. And the prophet came and laid a scenario before him. And all of a sudden, his eyes got open to what he had done. What moves the heart of God is that we are willing to admit that we have sinned. This is where most folks miss the mark, is we don't see anything wrong with what we've done. You know, we, we, we have minimized our sin. And let me tell you something. Everybody in here has done enough to be sent to hell several times over. What God desires is for us to be in a posture of acknowledging that we've sinned, acknowledge that I've done wrong, acknowledge that I've put my feet some places I shouldn't have put them, and I've put my hands on some things I shouldn't have touched, and I've looked at some things a little bit too long, and I've said some things that I wish I hadn't have said, and I listened to some stuff that I shouldn't have listened to, and I thought some thoughts I shouldn't have thought, and I pondered some things in my heart that I let stand there longer than I should have. We have to acknowledge our sins. If we acknowledge it, if we come to grips and acknowledge that we've done it, if we confess our sins, if we take ownership for it, if we admit it, and if we say, God, I know I've done wrong and I need some help. I don't know where y'all are, but I know I'm a sinner and I need help that only God can give to me to straighten my life out. so grateful today that God has made provisions for our sins to be washed away and he's given us help that if we acknowledge our sins he has made provisions for the slate to be made right and he's done it through the one and only true God his name is Jesus Christ 
not Muhammad, not Buddha, not Confucius, not Father Divine, not Daddy Grace. His name is Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. He's God wrapped up in human form, and he did the remarkable thing of doing what nobody else has ever done. He went to the cross and took the punishment. When he hung on the cross, God punished him and gave him the whipping that you and I should have gotten. Hallelujah. Here's how I'm able to get freed from my sin. Here's how I'm able to get forgiven and cleansed, that his blood was shed on the cross his blood dripped he got nailed in his hands nailed in his feet pierced in his side a crown of thorns placed on his head blood came streaming down and it was through his shedding of blood that God looked upon him and accounted it to cleanse me of all of my sin hallelujah that's great news somebody tell me somebody say that's great news I don't care what you've done, how long you've done it. I don't care where you have been. God has made provisions for you through the Lord Jesus Christ. And what is required is for you to put your faith and surrender your life to him. If you would be willing today, if you would be willing to say, I know I'm a sinner. I know I'm not right with God. I know I'm not living right. I know I'm not making the right choices. If you would be willing to acknowledge your sin to God, hallelujah, he's already in the right attitude and he's already taking the right actions to be able to wipe your slate clean and to forgive you of what you've done and to establish a relationship with God the Father if you just embrace the Son as God's provisions for you to have a relationship with Him. That's all you got to do. Now, I don't know who you are, but I know you're here today. And I would hate for you to walk out of here after having heard the gospel of Jesus Christ and reject it and say, I'll do it next week. I'll get it together next month. I'll wait till my wife comes. I'll wait till my husband comes. Baloney, you better forget about your husband and your wife, your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brother, your son, your daughter. You need to go ahead and get your life right with Jesus Christ right now. While the blood is running warm in your veins and you have the activities of your limbs, believe in Jesus accept and embrace him if you ain't walking right with God get right with him right now get out of your seat meet me right at this altar and I'll tell you today he will forgive you he will make you whole he will make you right don't be ashamed don't be embarrassed don't be afraid but come on and say yes I need Jesus we hope that you have been blessed by this message from Pastor Jenkins. If you're unsaved or have fallen away from your relationship with Jesus Christ, you just have to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart on, right now that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and rose again with all power. Your sins are now forgiven and you're part of the family of God. Welcome. Maybe you're already saved and in need of a church home, one that will nurture your growth and development as a Christian. Or perhaps you were once in fellowship with God, but have since drifted away and are ready to return to your first love. Whatever the case, we'd love to have you become a part of the First Baptist family. Simply contact us at 301-773-3600 or visit our website at www.fbcglenarden.org for information on any of our convenient services or 100 plus ministries designed to meet your most intimate needs. Pastor John K. Jenkins, Sr., First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. We are developing dynamic disciples.